Today we're talking about pool roofing, solar reflectance, emissivity, initial solar reflectance, and what that means for your metal roof design. Welcome back to the Metal Roofing Channel and the Standing Seam Metal Roof Design Series. Uh, we're going to dive deeper into cool roofing and initial solar reflectance, emissivity, and SRI and what that means to the impact of designing your standing seam metal roof today. So let's talk about what makes up cool roofing. Really, cool roofing is really defined in, in the metal roofing world as pigmented or painted metal roofing that is designed to uh, be highly reflective um, and just kind of combined with the natural characteristics of metal being highly emissive, you know, combining for products that create a higher SRI or a higher solar reflective index. So when we're talking cool roofing, um, you know, about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, standards were developed and over time uh, the paint companies uh, started developing better and better more reflective paints um, and really today it's kind of housed by a handful of standards uh, or minimum industry requirements whether you're working through lead uh, or whether you're working through energy star but cool metal roofing really is defined as a pigmented uh, painted metal roof uh, that carries a highly reflective characteristics uh, which are going to help uh, reduce energy costs and things like that versus, you know, a pigment that wasn't, uh, you know, something that had a high uh, uh, reflective characteristic to it. Okay, so talking about cool roofing, sounds like we have three different things. We have our solar reflectance, which is how much of the sun's energy the metal roof or the pigmented coating is going to reflect. And then you have the emissivity, which is how fast it's going to dissipate the heat that the metal absorbs. And then you have your solar reflective index, which is a combination of those two numbers. And they do a formula that comes up with a specific number based on your initial solar reflectance for rating and your emissivity uh, value. Yeah, and then kind of some other things that, that sort of build off of that is, uh, you know, you don't want a product that's going to be initially highly solar reflective um, and then over time degrade to a point where it's it's really not performing as well. So the industry also tracks a three year uh, solar reflectance, which anything over time uh, does degrade. Um, you know, the, a lot of the metal roofing and coated metal roofing products uh, tend to maintain and carry or, or hold a higher uh, solar reflectance over uh, three years is how it's measured in the industry as well. Right, so it doesn't just have a good rating in the beginning and it, you know, tapers off to a dramatic point yeah. five years down the road. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So when you're thinking a little bit deeper, dive into initial solar reflectance, you know, it's measured on a scale of zero to one. So it's, it's measured in decimals. Zero would be uh, something that is completely uh, non-reflective. That would be your black is black. Uh, while a one would be something that's totally reflective, like your white is white. So a lot of these, these colors and pigments are, are uh, calculated through there. And we can hit on a few of the, the minimum in industry standards as it pertains to lead uh, and Energy Star as well. They have different requirements based on what they consider certified based on the slope, whether it's steep slope or low slope. Uh, your low slope roofing is gonna be anything a 212 or less. Your steep slope roofing is gonna be anything a 212 or greater. And they're gonna have different values based on you know the slope of your roofing system. Lead V4 requires an SRI value. For steep slope roofing, they require a 39, and for low slope roofing, they require an 82. Energy Star's requirements vary a little bit uh, from LEED. Energy Star is more focused on the initial solar reflectance and not necessarily the combination of emissivity and initial solar reflectance that LEED is in uh, SRI. Um, the initial solar reflectance requirements for steep slope roofing for Energy Star is 0.25 uh, and it's uh, a three-year uh, minimum of 0.15 after that. So. 
Um, they're taking into account the initial and then the three year and the minimum for a steep slope is 0.25 and the three year is 0.15. So what does this mean for practical application? Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory says, for every 1% increment in roof reflectance, surface temperature decreases one degree Fahrenheit. For every 10% increase in roof reflectance, heating and cooling costs drop two cents per square foot per year. So all of this is dependent on where you're located geographically. You know, you're, you're gonna design a different system, you know, in a different, you know, one area of the country versus another. You know, there's other things that are gonna impact that as well as the pigments that you choose, finishes that you choose, you know, it's gonna depend on the environment you're in. So one of the things Cool Roofing does, based on all we talked about, is help mitigate the urban heat island effect. And that's where you have a lot of buildings closely together that all retain heat and radiate that heat out. Um, so in a city environment or urban environment, say it's 80 degrees outside, but inside the city itself could actually be a higher temperature because it's causing that heat to radiate out back into the city. And it's not only, not only that, but it's holding that heat in as well. Um, you know, we call it the concrete jungle or the urban heat island effect. And that's why a lot of places have parks and things designed to help break up all those building materials that are retaining that heat. So what we've learned, there's a number of things that really impact how cool your roof can be. But beyond that, you know, in terms of getting into the type of finish and things like that, there's things like low gloss versus standard gloss. And there's actually paint systems that can impact how cool your roof can be as well. So when you're talking about the different types of paint systems out there for metal roofing, you know, PBDF versus SMP, PBDF is really the gold standard. It's the best paint system available out there. It has a higher chalk and fade rating, and it's gonna keep that SRI value longer than some other paint systems on the market. Within a PVDF or a Kynar type paint system, you're also gonna have different coating systems within that, such as a low gloss system or a high gloss system. A lot of the low gloss systems don't reflect as, as effectively as a high gloss system. So you have that extra gloss, you're getting a little bit extra gloss of it, and it actually performs a little bit better in the field in that uh, it's not retaining a lot of the uh, debris and dirt and things like that. So now that we've covered the topic of cool metal roof, and if there's any requirements you need to meet or any design help, any questions you might have, please feel free to reach out to us anytime and we'll be more than happy to assist you with anything you might have going on. Next week, we have a video on ventilation on the standing seam roof design series. Also, make sure you subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel so you can say, stay current on our roofing videos.